Welcome to the skin retouching episode of the post-production camp videos. Uh, this is the latest version for skin retouching. This is my daughter Talia, uh, taken a couple of months ago. Now I'm only working in Photoshop in this one just because there's just so much to it. Um, what I what I tend to do is I don't, when I do um, retouch, I don't tend to uh, do it quite as heavily as professional retouchers do. However, I do try and keep the same principles. Um, for retouching. So um, I've picked a tween or she's actually a teen because um, I'm a kids photographer so for those of you that photograph adults as well hopefully this will be helpful. Now um, I've left the camera data up here for you just so that you can see quickly before we get started um, on what the camera data was of um, the EXIF was before before we get started. Okay so we'll just put that away all right first of all i'd like to get started on how i'd like the overall feel of this image to be i would like it to be more about talia rather than the plants around her though i don't i do like the plants around her i think the flowers are really pretty so i'd like to keep them in however i do want to draw attention to talia before i get started on retouching so what i'm going to do is Control j and duplicate the layer and I'm going to go into image, apply image, and select multiply out of the blending. The channel is on red at the moment. Um, and I'll press mask on that. So we've got the layer from the background, channel red, multiply 100% opacity, and mask selected and press OK. Now, all that's done is darken and desaturate around her. The reason I've done that is because I simply do want it to draw attention to her face. So now I'm going to make a mask layer out of that and grab the black brush and just brush back on her skin. Just so that I can keep her the focus on her face more. Okay. Now, to begin with, I would like to desaturate her skin a little bit, so I'm going to go and get a hue saturation mask and click any other colour but red. Click the eyedropper, click on her skin and red 2 comes up and then I'm just going to go minus 2 on light, on saturation, but I'm going to do a minus 10 on her skin there, on lightness. And that's just desaturated and lightened the reds. I'm just going to grab a black brush and brush that off around her hair, possibly on her lips as well, and her eyes. Okay. Okay, now I want to do. Uh, Want to, I'd like to create a dodge and burn mask so I'm going to go to layer new layer new layer and call this dodge select out grey mode is soft light and fill with soft light at neutral colour so that's grey soft light and then I tick fill press ok now I'm able to dodge, so I'm going to grab a white brush, I'm going to pop it onto soft light, make sure it's fluffy, and I'll use 100% opacity at first so that you can see, and I'm able to dodge on her skin quite subtly if I reduce that opacity down. What we'll do is we'll just reduce the, the mask down when it's all said and done. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is just lighten this side of her face a little bit. Alright, now I'd like to make another new layer and make it a burn layer. And we go through the same process. We select out grey, soft light, and tick fill with soft light neutral 
colour. This time I'm going to grab a black brush, also on soft light mode, and I just want to burn this side of her hair a little bit further. Okay, juicy opacity of that a little bit. Okay, so now it appears that the sun is more flat on her face at this point in time. Now if I can go back into her skin here. I'm going to grab the dodge tool again. So I'm going to make this white. And I just want to dodge the highlights in her eyes. Be careful with this. Alright. And I'm going to dodge some highlights in her hair as well. She has got blonde highlights, so I'm just making that stand out a little bit more than it already was. All right. Okay, so now I will merge these layers into a group. Make that a mask, and here's a before and after. All right. Now we move on to the next step, which is uh, softening the skin as well as keeping the texture of the skin underneath the skin layer. Now, for those of you that want to skip this bit, you can just use Portrait Gel, which is the plugin which I mentioned before. However, for those of you that do want to know how to another way to professionally retouch that keeps the skin intact underneath doesn't make everything completely soft this is another way of doing it okay so I have my new background I'm actually going to duplicate that layer and take it into a new file and I'll flatten it which we don't want to do too many times because it is harmful to the file but in order to do this next step we really need to be working on the file that we want to be working on um, and it needs to be about on a background layer so what I'm going to do is duplicate that background layer twice. I'm going to call the middle one blur and the top one sharpen. And I'm going to do a Gaussian blur on the middle one, the blur layer. Now this is all in the PDF and I'm going to make it about 2.2. But what you want to do is make sure when you look at it that it's blurred the pores of the skin just enough. You don't want to overdo it. Then I'm going to click on the sharpen layer, go to image, apply image. Now what I'd like to do is under the layer I select blur. The RGB channel uh, should be RGB. I'm going to have the blending on add. The scale should be about 2, the offset 0 and I'm going to tick invert and it's going to make a grey mask. Then I press OK, and I'd like to make that linear light. OK, now just for good sake, I'm going to go to Blur, and go to Surface Blur, and the Radius 10 and the Threshold 10, and press OK. Now, if you have a closer look here, what it's done is it's actually cartooned her a little bit. So this isn't the look that you really want. All right, now I'm gonna take this off and show you. So that top sharpen layer has sharpened. Using that apply image is a way to sharpen the layer. And then we've got the blur and that uh, allows us to blur the layer. Okay, 
So I'm going to select um, with the color picker um, a light part of her skin. Maybe a more yellow, lighter part. There we go. And I'm going to grab a fluffy brush and I want to make the opacity about 8%, usually under 10. And I'm just going to paint on the blur layer and lighten up her skin just a little bit. Okay. And okay, so brush on her skin. Now let's have a little closer look. Okay, so it's made her very powdery and I think that the blur and sharpen have worked together to make her look a little bit plastic. So we're going to reduce the opacity of that, but let's have a look at the sharpen layer on its own without the blur. It does it quite a lot, that's why combining them together works so well. So I'm just going to make that about 85 and the sharpen layer about 85 as well. And I don't mind that at all. I think that combines quite nice. Zoom in. And make a group so that we can do a before and after. And there we have it. So what it's done is it's flattened out her skin and removed a lot of the pores there, if you can see that, without going overboard and without making her too plastic. There we go. All right. So this is the skin. Perfect. Now what we might do is just do a couple of patches. So I'm going to duplicate to both layers actually. just to keep them there again and now I've got a working layer again and now I'd like to grab the patch tool now be careful with the patch tool it can leave um, things behind that you really don't want there but I'm just going to patch out any pimples Okay, and this area of her nose here. Just gonna lighten that a little bit. Okay. And what I would like to do now is work about the areas under her eyes. So she has got a little bit of darkness here. So I'm just gonna grab the patch tool I've duplicated the layer and I'm going to drag that tool forward. Okay. Then I'm going to grab the dodge tool, which is under the burn tool. And just dodge that back a little bit. And the lasso tool on about 40. Let's see if that's enough. And while I'm in here, I might grab this area here as well. And I'm just going to add a little bit of red back in. So there is red there. Okay. So it's still before and after. Now that's too much. So I want to still keep it like she has skin under there. Don't want them to be completely gone. But this area here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I've got rid of the darks under her eyes. All right, now this area of her hair bugs me tremendously. So all I'm going to do is simply grab the other side, edit, copy, edit, paste, edit, transform and flip horizontally. And I'm going to move this over here, grab the erase tool, reduce the opacity a little bit as we move in closer, and then reduce the opacity of that down. OK. 
Okay. And lighten it a little bit. All right. So there we have it. I think that's better. Okay. I'm going to co um, copy that over to the original file that we were working on just so that we can do a before and after. Okay. So this is where we're at at the moment. Let's zoom into a skin and have a look. All right, last but not least, what I'd like to do is complete this file off uh, so that um, basically I've done all the skin retouching that I'd like to do. Look, there is hair here. Um, I don't mind. You can take that out if you want. Um, it doesn't bother me. I know it bothers some people, so uh, it's really up to personal taste. I mean, if this was going on the cover of a magazine, I'd likely have to move it. Uh, maybe just this little bit down here the patch tool that's standing out a little bit so I'll just gently patch that you don't want to do too much work of that on patch because it does leave little pixels behind patch is a little bit disastrous with that especially when you've gone to this extent to to retouch and still leave um, the pores under her skin like like we have here okay so let's go and have another look Okay, so now um, I'm looking at the over overall photograph and I do want to enhance some of it. What I'd like to do is Control J and duplicate the layer and I'm going to just grab this area down here. These greens down here have been bugging me the whole entire time. So it's about time I ridded those. And I'm just going to grab that area and work on it. And I'm going to go to Hue Saturation, any other colour but yellow and drag the yellow twos across because when you click any other color but yellow yellow two will come up usually when you click on green okay so I've just desaturated that I probably you'd probably want to do it on a mask but that's okay it is what it is okay I might even control J now and simply blur that a little bit okay just so it becomes more part of the photograph. Now I'm just colour matching the feel of the photograph on both sides, basically. So I've blurred that with Gaussian Blur and now I'm erasing off the shoulder just a touch. And her hair here. All right. and control E to merge those three layers together and I'm just going to grab the sponge tool now and desaturate the green on the edge of her there. Fiddly stuff, not entirely necessary, just matching the colours on either sides. Okay, so I'm desaturating the, uh, desaturating the greens down in other areas as well now with the desaturation sponge. Okay, So as you can see, I've just colour matched that. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity so it's not quite so obvious. And there we have it. So now I have a new working on file. I'm just going to merge those three. All right. So uh, looking at that, what I'd like to do is work on her hair. So I'm going to grab a lasso rather large and just lasso her hair doesn't need to be perfect she's already got lots of colors and highlights in there okay now I mean I could quite happily leave this photo as is by the way we're just fiddling now but um just some more things that you can do. So control J and duplicate that and I've got that hair now on its own. 
Now let's go back to this file here and grab this darker area. On the top here. I don't want that little blonde bit. And control J on that as well. I'm going to put that over the top. Okay, so I'd like to work on this top bit to begin with. Now you can uh, make that a mask or you can just work on it on its own, but I'm just going to grab it and do um, a colour balance and warm the top of her hair up to match the blonde here and add a little bit of red as well. She's actually got a little bit of red in her hair. So now we've uh, lightened and made her hair more golden at the top, just slightly. Now with this one as well, I'm going to go to color balance and maybe add a little bit of golden in. Okay, now you don't want to go over top there we go. I think that's much nicer. So I'll duplicate that layer, Control J, and combine these for you so that you can see. Control E to merge. There we go. Okay, so obviously the sun's coming in from this side as well. What I would like to do is possibly add a little bit of flare. So I'm going to go select all, layer, duplicate layer, which is control J. I have to select all again. I'm going to go down the bottom here and select a gradient. And this time I'm going to select an orangey gradient. Okay. And I'm going to make that radial and press OK. And just carefully, very carefully move that above. Now if you didn't want these lines to show, you just would have made that radial area smaller. But I'm quite happy to that for that to go above there like that. Now I'm going to grab a brush and just brush off on her a little bit. And I'll reduce the opacity of that down a bit. Okay. So now there's light coming down from above. Now in doing that, I can now add a little bit of warmth over here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow. And a little bit of yellow over here. Okay. Now that's a much warmer version. So now I can just grab a hue saturation mask right over the top. I'll put that to the top. And saturate that up a little bit. Okay, so let's duplicate this layer, merge these. So this is before the saturation in the sun. This is the whole lot. Now that yellow might be a little bit too much for you. It's really up to personal taste, like I said. The other thing that we can do now is we can go in and we can grab um, the dodge tool. Now you might notice that I'm not doing this on entirely mask layers. It is always better to do it on mask layers for those of you wondering. But um, I'm just dodging some of her hair to light, I like lighten up those highlights a little bit. Alright, so 
So now I'm just going to grab the uh, saturation sponge and saturate the top up here a little bit. So that's some bearing down. Actually, I don't want the greens to saturate, so maybe I won't do that at all. Let's have a look. Saturate up that pink a little bit. All right. I'm fairly happy with that. Voila. So here we have before and after. I hope you enjoyed this episode. That was a little bit of work, but a lot of fun. It's always fun to play. Um, I think it's really important to understand how to know to do a good um, skin retouch um, that leaves all the detail in there. And um, this is a really, like I've said so many times, this is a really good way of doing it. You can still see the pores under her skin under here and it hasn't blurred her too much. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next episode.